Okay, bring the select board to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda? We've got these letters we could probably take up. I was thinking that'd be under the interests in the economic development. Yeah, I thought we could probably do it there. It's a little bit broader in scope, so it's more of this. Okay. Um, I did want to just talk and have a little discussion on face masking in municipal buildings. I know you guys already approved it. Well, we approved what the, what the employees asked for. So okay. that's that's the reason we, and okay. that's the reason I approved it because it was it was requested from the employees and, okay. and uh, we wanted to, okay. to honor the honor what they wanted to work. So I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about whether we do the whole building or not, but maybe it's not the right for us. Yeah. Uh, is there any other additions? <coughs> uh, not. All right. So I'll call the trustees to order with myself, Kenny, and BJ here. And that's it. There's three to get quorum. Any additions you guys have for the meeting tonight? I guess we're all set. Okay, first items the web hosting. And unfortunately, you guys probably are aware that the one that has started it, we're back to square one again. So uh, I made one change to the print copy you have in front of you. There was a typo uh, in the first sentence uh, that I have since corrected. Uh, other than that, is the same one that you see over. So what's the correction? Uh, in the first sentence, it used to say seeking bids from two qualified volunteers. Oh, okay. Like T O. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or it might have been two from but the word two was inserted in there yeah and didn't make grammatical sense anymore okay so, um, so that's been removed no sub no substantial changes of the month. So for myself, um, I've read through this. I am not a web expert, and any of you guys have a lot more experience with that. If you're okay with this, then I say we move forward with this request out. I don't have any objections to it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Now, the previous company was just one employee company. It was. Uh, reached out to uh, try and find out if anybody else is taking over, possibly. And I haven't heard back from anyone. And this was the Peterson? They got Peterson group or whatever? Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> Okay. It was Grant Harper and his company, his company was, I think, Website Valley. So, you guys okay with this? Yes, yeah. I asked a question. Go ahead. Um, Brian, is this just about hosting our existing site, or is this about more than that? I would be interested in hearing more from them about if they offer design services, but this is just about hosting. Uh, that at a minimum, we we need a new web host uh, who can continue to provide updates and secure the website. It's kind of our, our immediate. And then we'll have further discussions about website rebuild, and that is not what this is about. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, the same person might be able to provide both services, but there's no guarantee of that. So well, get our immediate need first. Okay. If the scope of this is truly just about hosting, like I don't actually want to talk about anything more because if we're going to talk about, which we hopefully are, it's one of our priorities, we're going to talk about a website rebuild. Um, that's a very different discussion and we need to change this RFP drastically. But if it's simply about hosting what we have, uh, I don't have any concerns with what's here. Now, Grant, have you done some proposed rebuild? Yes. Um, is that all wasted effort now? I can share with whoever, when we get to the stage where we're talking about a new website, we can share that with whoever we go with, if we like Grant's design. Um, that was some of the original requests we made with Grant, where the, the old, the current website has gotten very stale. 
Yeah, we wanted to refresh. Yeah, and, and Grant is willing to do that for us, but that's a, a different RFP and a different request. This is just for keeping us online. Uh, John had a problem, I, and I believe it was resolved, but we recently had a problem with uploading minutes and things to the website for a few days, and there's nobody there to resolve the problems anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it thankfully worked itself out, but uh, we could have been in a bad way if, if anything more serious had happened. So, yeah, uh, this is just our immediate need about the person that was in our website no longer is. You guys want to make a motion to approve this RFP? Yeah, I'm going to approve the RFP. I think that's posted on the website. Yeah. So, BJ has made a motion to uh, accept the RFP for uh, the host of the Village and Town website. I have a second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor said motion to aye. 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 Chair is aye. Motion passes. Well, I would entertain a motion that mirrors the village trustee. So, motion is second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. And it's jointly owned property. All right. Jointly owned property investments and repair. Town and village. Uh, what we we have some old discussions between prior trustees and prior select board members. They're just kind of on high level discussions about who's responsible for what buildings, what happens if you know repairs get made. There's been nothing in writing. Uh, and I really think that it would be to everybody's best interest if we spend a little bit of time really thinking about and getting something in writing of what are our responsibilities for. Uh, investment and maintenance on our jointly owned buildings. Now, the village is about to make pretty substantial investment into one of those buildings. Uh, so, having started the discussion before that happened, be recommended. So, on paper, all the garages are jointly owned? Yes. Okay. And there had always been an understanding like the ones that are jointly used this building, the cold storage, the mill house. Uh, we each supported whatever the needs were of that particular building. But if it was a building that uh, was jointly owned but exclusively used, your uh, electric building, our highway building, we each uh, maintained and, and supported it on our own. Mm -hmm. I guess one concern there is while we each maintain it and uh, do everything on our own, we do each own. The whole buildings, and so there is liability there for us all, no matter who maintains it. Right. That's something we probably should get a little bit clearer between us on what our own responsibilities are. Do you have a proposal? I don't know. I think we just wanted to put this out to you guys because, you know, what the dilemma we're in and what you guys thought about. Do we have an inventory? Uh, nothing. So, not a formal list, but I, I think we could probably name them without much difficulty. Have you guys thought about it at all where you kind of have an idea to start with, or it's just like just thrown out fresh? Yeah, I can try and draft an MOU and having a little bit of guidance from the boards about what they'd like to see would help me a lot. But once you start with the list, so that if you want to, if you I, want to. I think what brought this to light is, you know, we're aware of what you guys are planning or the issues you're dealing with or yeah. your building. And, and you want to help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not financially. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are into it. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's the this building, the town clerk's building. Yep. The, the um, important note, the, the fire station is not going Right. It's solely owned by the village, even though they share the same parking lot and everything. This building is jointly owned. That one's a separate parcel and not 
not uh, the uh, everything in the the old mill park is owned by the town. Pretty much everything else in that complex is going to own. That includes the food shelf uh, where Troy has his office, uh, both garages, the lower storage, the upper storage, and kind of the whole area back there is all jointly owned. Uh, that also, I think, would include our salt shed and uh, the staging area. Oh, so that would, if you're going after the salt shed, I'd say you would include the, the what is that, smokehouse? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That would be, that's definitely what the The property is, the building itself is not, right? Did the fire department build that building? Well, what? Did the fire department build that building? Yeah. Or was it there? It was a grant we got for, for, uh, for being a small town, for being a training building for the. Uh, so that would be village only building. The, the building, yeah, but I mean, obviously, you know, it's on it's on jointly owned property. So. Well, the salt sheds. The salt shed is. We, we be, built that. The town built that. I, if we did not have any kind of ammo, anything in writing, I think it would be hard for us to say that those are not jointly owned because they're built on jointly owned properties. That may have never been our intention to make them jointly owned, right. but without something saying otherwise, you know, of course I'm not aware, but without something saying otherwise, I would have a hard time assuming that those were not jointly owned, given their location. Do you want to start with the easy stuff? <laughs> What's that? It's all shed. Okay. I mean, that. You know, yeah. I mean, that to me, common sense would say you guys built it. That belongs to you. But that, yeah. does, anybody, does anybody disagree with that statement? Okay. Smokehouse. Smokehouse would be a smokehouse would be another one that we could I mean, use. Use it is as a park. Yeah, it's strictly and it's, it's county wide, so yeah. it's you know more so High Park, Cambridge, um, North High Park, all all have <laughs> access to it, and they and they have used it. For uh, for interior firefighting training, so that would make sense. But that is village only. Okay. Yeah. So we can. Okay. But then the mill house, the uh, cold storage, and the two. Uh, two Two. Yeah. Those are really it's still joint the only. Right. And of the leaning tower. And the leaning tower. Huh? Whatever you want to call that. I would like to talk about it. It's actually heated. Yeah. When, when it's appropriate time, it's just appropriate time. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I was a village trustee before the youngest member of the select board was born. And, uh, during that time, as I recall, <laughs> we had talked about maintenance of the old mill house or lack of thereof. And so here it is, close to 30 years later. And nothing to speak of has been done on that building. And uh, we need to crab or get off the pot on this building. And uh, I haven't really run this by uh, many people, but I think one or the other, either the, uh, the town or the village, should own that building completely. Because what I have found over the years, because it is a joint building and it's out of sight, out of mind, nothing ever seems to get done. And we always have to wait for some joint meeting to discuss it. And usually it's just a discussion and no action. And I think if one board or one entity, whether it be the town or the village, own that piece of property in its entirety, something could get done. And I think something needs to be done very quickly on that building because we do not want to lose that building. Now this is food shelf building. Yes, yeah. um, Mike, personally, I agree. You know, I, I, I think that the hindrance of having both boards on that, on that building has become very obvious. Um, I mean, our only, the village's only interest in that is Troy's office, which he is now using again because of the conditions in the garage. Um, I would not be opposed to a consideration of um, the town taking that building over because you know, the Boy Scouts meet there and once they still do or not, I've been there for years. 
the food shelf is there, other than Troy's office. You know, that would give you guys, it, it seems to be more of a town entity than, than just a village. If we could use that space that Troy currently has until we get our garage issue in our in his office set up, um, I, I would be more than happy to entertain an idea of turning it over to the town so that, you know, one of you uses the most would be to be able to take that and then we can, you guys can move forward on um, what needs to be done to that building. What would it take to do that? I think we'd have to draw up something and then both boards approve it. And maybe at the conclusion of this meeting, we can start that and draw something up. Yeah. And if you guys, we, we both agree to it. Yeah. Well, to, so we're not putting Brian on task for something that's not going to come, come around. What are you guys' thoughts on, on my statement? I mean, obviously, it's a board decision. So we want them to move forward with trying to draft something up where we can use the space for for uh, Troy's office until our until our building issues are resolved, and then they can take okay. and run it as they see fit. Um, considering most of the, most of the use of that that building right now is typically town stuff. So, yeah, we'll find it. what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if there's no other solution. The boards working together to fix it up together. I guess and that would probably be the best solution. Because I took a job interview there with Ed Wizzle in 1988. And the building was in the same shape. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diane, your thoughts? Um, that is fine with me to have okay. the town take it over. All right. So, as of right now, you have a go ahead with getting that something drafted up. And like I said, as yeah. long as we can, I mean, we can work on it and submit something for both boards, and yeah. go from there. Uh, Beth, do you have anything you want to add on that? On the mill house, no, not so much. Um, if Troy's office will switch back, I assume at some point. If yeah, I mean, as soon as we get a space where he can actually be in, um, he never, he didn't actually use the office very much to begin with. Um, now, now that the guys are going to have a place to meet and stuff like that, they're in between storms here. They're in there removing the stuff that's nothing to be there making space to have meetings and stuff like that. So they can have their deep briefings in the mornings and stuff like that. So um, we would like to continue to use that space until we get the garage, which is top of the priority list for us. So it's not something on the back burner. Sure, we can charge you back, no problem. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's a great direction. Um, I There is very close to the building, directly behind it, there is a generator on the pad that's jointly open. So we'll have to make provision for that sometime. And what does that provide power for? Town and village garages. Town and village garages. In case of a power outage. Okay. I don't know if it provides power to the house itself. I okay. don't, don't recall if it provides to the house itself, but um, it, so it does best generally for both garages. I think that's the only sort of consideration. I'm trying to think about what the actual thing of what the footprint we're talking about is the building or is it some amount of length at all? Yeah. We had run into that when we were first discussing some time ago of possibly carving that off as a separate parcel so that we might be able to go through uh, Brownfield's redevelopment for it. Yeah. Uh, I still think so. What, so whether it's a right away for the generator, yeah. you know, or whether the generator is not included in the parcel, I'm not sure how close it is to the building. That would be, you know, either one of those I think would work. It just as long as we have the yeah. access to it. Yeah. A detailed workout. Yeah. yeah. What were you saying, Brian? Well, I was just gonna say that's a solvable problem. Like it, it, it's not just yeah. Oh yeah, but we as long as it's known up. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't know about it. So thanks for bringing that up. Doug, you for well, I, I, I wanted to say that, you know, whoever, you know, when any of these buildings go, you can mention that <coughs> this is, you know, was built and it's outlanded. When you have a piece of property and it doesn't have a footprint that you own that goes with it, your 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 investment is somewhat suspect long term. You know, you, you almost need to define a parcel. What's the parking lot? What's the usage? Things like this. So I, I think it's more complicated. You know, you're talking about use and maintenance and maybe that's you know, what I've heard is use and maintenance and sometimes maintenance moves into like well we put the money into it who gets it who owns it long term and the owners of the footprint or something like that. 
Well, the town would own it long term, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I, assumed it. I would. I would think if you guys are assuming it, there's a footprint that goes with it. The building, you know, whether it's conveyance for the generator or whether it's the property line is before the generator. Whatever, you know, that's that's just semantics. But um, yeah, and I was I'll give you a hundred acres with it, but you know, well, well, we take it. Yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> well, if you're going to do something like you need a survey, you need a survey, you need a you need a thing, you, uh, you know, it, it's it, you can do it and work towards this, but I, I just think that your first step shouldn't be your last step, and, and it should be more, you know, encompassing. So that would also apply with like the salt shed and the, the smokehouse. There needs to be a defined footprint for that. Well, I, I, I'm, you know, you can do what you want, but I, 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 I think that you know, as as uh, the times I've seen people building homes and barns and stuff on other people's property hasn't worked well long term. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I would imagine that there would be conveyance of land to go with it. I mean, that's. You know, a building on someone else's property is never a good thing. Unfortunately, today everything has to be so complicated. Right. So this parcel basically has to be something. Well, I would suggest well, you think about that. House, you know, you can parcel. say we're going to define this at some point, but you don't get to it. Or you well, if we're going to define one building in one law, then the rest of it ought to be. Well, I, I don't disagree. You know, yeah, uh, I, I'm not a voting member, but I, I think that whoever owns it ought to have a, a useful utilitarian space around. Absolutely. That's true. Absolutely. We need to move forward with this as soon as possible and not get bogged down right. in all of this legal piece. Yeah. And so uh, um I thought this was about having a memorandum of agreement and not about transferring ownership. I mean to me transferring ownership makes it more complicated. And if we have a memorandum of agreement um Yes, we both remain liable for anything that's joint on a joint property, um, but is that okay? Like, is this a good short-term step to have the memorandum of agreement with a long-term goal of transferring property? I think that works. Just, I think just, having, I think having a, I think having an end goal and agreeing upon the end goal here today, or at least starting the top, you know, come up with something. I think it's going to be is going to be a good idea. Obviously. Who's going to be responsible for what immediately is going to be good. But I mean, I think having a, a direction to move this forward and it, so it doesn't take another 30 years. I'd like, I'd like to see this resolved before Mike dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. And I'm just thinking about like Brian's time and all of this too. And having a memorandum of agreement makes it much less taxing on Brian. And while I don't know it, you have Meredith spending her time on, or if she's doing anything like this at this point, I have no idea. But while you're seeking somebody to fill that position, um, is a lighter lift to have that agreement? Well, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I'm just saying there's no reason not to have an end goal kind of drafted out tonight. Do, would you disagree with that? Sure, if the board can keep it simple and there's not a lot of overhead for Brian, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we all kind of agree on the on the mill house. Is that am I yeah, correct? I okay, then the smoke house is going to be a similar situation. Mm -hmm. um, fire department owned, um, so that we just would take a piece and of the land and use that and get the smoke house to the village. You see, those is very different. The what? The salt shed for sure. I mean, it's almost a temporary building. I mean, it's, it, it could move anywhere. We don't need to do a subdivision for the salt shed. It's not a complicated thing. It's just, and I think the smoke out, you know, is there a foundation under that? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's poured. There is. Yeah. But the house is probably the most complicated thing than the other stuff is. Yeah. Relatively yeah. Yeah. I would think, but I'm not. I mean, if you're looking for if you're looking for basically a memorandum on who's responsible for what, obviously we're responsible for our garage. We're responsible for your garage. Where do you guys feel on the responsibility of the of the uh, coal storage building, the, the one below? Oh, I mean that's a good one to bring up. I mean, it's, in the garage itself, it's kind of split 50-50. I was sure. thinking me and BJ were down there a week or so, two or like a couple weeks ago now. But you know, you got your side, we got our side, so that and upstairs is all recreation. So. No, 
when we first bought the whole potential complex over there, <clears throat> the original plan had it laid out where the, the village garage maintenance shop went to where it is now. But the, the plan was that the village was going to move down and take over what is now the cold storage building. And the building on the hill where you guys currently are was going to be, become the cold storage building. Um, if that was to still happen, would that be a cheaper course for you guys? And obviously, they're still going to have to do some remedy for the, the whole mold issue. But right, it's, it'd be a lot cheaper for us to, you know, tear out what's there and just turn it into a cold storage. Yeah, that was the original plan. Anyhow, that building really would be cold storage. It's a, some of you guys to think about. It. Obviously, we all get a agree on it. But with the, with the, with the, with the joint, with the joint they own. Well, I mean, technically, we're all jointly owned, but we kind of had an understanding that this was ours, this was yours, and this was everybody's. You know, I mean, if that's something that would be in the works, if your board can kind of give us a consensus that they'd be willing to to move things around like that, I would be very interested in looking at that option. And we obviously, we'd be responsible for the mediation of, of the condition in, in the building before it turned into cold storage. Right. I mean, in concept, What's the board's thoughts on that? The most for input on the town of Blades, the public works department. I haven't seen the village for all of it, the other two. I mean, it would save the village a whole lot of money, I would think. If you're talking about you okay, get cold out. I think Troy has some issues. Who does? Troy does. Troy does. Looking like they're putting on flooding issues. And I don't know what the ceiling is. Is that ever flooded? It's very cold. I don't, I don't know what the did, I don't hmm. know what the head space is in the other garage, but to change the tires out on the trucks or when they do something with the dump bodies, they have to do them down there in the whole storage zone because there's not enough space to do it in our garage. For our new our dump trucks. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case and it's the same in the village garage, we'd be shooting ourselves in the foot. Okay, I mean that's something I wasn't aware of. We need to save the village as much money as we can because someday we might be all together anyway. But we can look into it. Okay. See. Yeah, I mean if you guys are willing to, I mean we're we're moving forward on I'm fixing that building one way or another. Um, whether it be fixing it or building something else. But um, yeah, if you guys want to next meeting put on your agenda to discuss the possibility and I'll meet with Troy. Uh, see what his flavor is about that building. Yeah. I mean, unless there's some issue with like Evan's brought up with the town, I don't see where it really mattered for us which building was cold storage, but well. Yeah, the rec storage is significant. It's, it's, it's not an unsolvable problem for sure, but the rec storage there is for the upstairs. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Does, does a rec storage need heat? Yes. Uh, it does get some use all year round. Uh, less so in the winter, but enough use that it would it needs a needs heat. So we have heat. In the cold storage building for the wreck. Yes. Well, that and the trucks. You know, keeping keeping it. Yeah, keeping we're not eating the whole thing just yeah. for right storage, but right storage is included in the circuit that feeds the rest of the building. Right, right. You know, so it's not a it's not sitting around temperature, but it's you know enough to yeah. keep the trucks that are there that are there that they can start when it's needed. So it's a you know garage temperatures. I, I would just suggest that uh, the really hard look at this and. The, if the issues are worth forcing the village to scramble for a million dollars, you know, I think that that building, the, I've talked to village employees about the building, and, and I heard about the flooding, you know, the, the floodplain issue. Uh, we have some pretty good idea of, of, flood, of flood warnings now and things like this. Uh, certainly don't want to be losing your equipment, you know. 
uh, if we move it off. I would assume that that if we needed to do something to trucks, that we would be able to have some accommodation, you know, for for that. You know, so. Have we ever had that? Flood? It's gotten close, but never. I try to think. I, I wasn't down there in '95, but the flood, the three the other floods up and down there, it's been. You still get access to building. Ninety-five would have been the year the test gate. Correct. And I and actually since it then, so I don't know. Say since the oil, since the oil's right there, all we would need to do is get an elevation shot of the river that they, they read it every twenty minutes, and we know what the flood level was in ninety-five. We know where where it was on that building. So that's a simple elevation shot. Couldn't we? find some way to mitigate that you know find ways to not have it flood no uh, you, uh, okay it can be done okay but not not for not not for any kind of money that we got i mean whenever it arises it it encompasses you know the, the barrier you have to put up would be astronomical you know, China, chinese wall type of stuff i mean it's worse than uh, the sterling market oh yeah yeah, yeah. Story, story market is just, and actually, story market is not flood proof. It just reduces the amount of water that goes right. into it. Um, and then trying, I mean, just trying to prevent the water from coming in the doors is not the issue. We have to, have, we have to allow access to the building. So uh, that would be a significantly larger uh, number. Well, we did just receive a, a grant for flood mitigation. Just off the river from the lower storage building. So the risk of flooding at that lower storage building is likely to change once that's completed. Is likely to change in a positive way where it will? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I would expect that. <laughs> right. That's our intent. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it should be seen. That's hard. So why can't we look at that for all of the rocks? Oh, I definitely, I definitely, you know, in a floodplain anymore. If the slide board's willing to, I thought we're basically talking on going on. Yeah, I mean, if it's if we won't waste our time, but if the slide board is interested in, in that in that possibility, then it, we, you know, we definitely would look at that happening. Hi, Steve. Maybe a, you know, a good way to look at it is each of us, town perspective, village perspectives. What's the pros and cons? Yeah. So how much I, I actually been up into the, the storage for the rec committee. I mean, I spent a lot, a lot of hours up in that office up there, but is that space? I mean, how much is it trucker block full type stuff or it's yeah, it is quite full. It is, you know, these are pretty well organized and everything, so it's not like a ramble, but yeah, but so it's it's more than what's gonna fit in Troy's office. No, yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna fit in close. It's, they literally have shelves. So when I was there, we had tables. When Nat and I were on the board, we had tables, like the tables you're sitting at. And they were lined throughout the upstairs when I first moved over there. Since then, there is shelving and the back quarter, maybe even that whole half at this point, is all shelving with equipment. And I know when I was on rec on rec, um, that equipment is all very important equipment to running much of our programs that we run. Um, and there's a lot of it. If you're talking about, if you just think about one sport, think about baseball for a second, and you have two umpire, you know, the full shield, the helmet, the mask, just the umpire, and then you have bats and helmets and balls, and just, you know, multiply that across all the sports that we offer. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. A lot of stuff. So that would take a, that'd be, that'd be the hardest thing probably to deal with, funding the space for all that stuff. If we're going to talk about a memorandum of understanding, shouldn't we include the jointly owned equipment? I didn't go across the that's, that's a very gray area where the town usually loses. So what I can offer as a suggestion to get us started with is addressing the three kind of most important buildings off the bat. Um, we can do something along the lines of, you know, 
the building ownership remains joint, investment in the building, improvements of the building are at the discretion of one party or the other, you know, the discretion of the village. The village uh, for the village garage doesn't obligate the town to contribute anything, even though the town still jointly owns the building. The village can spend on whatever it wants on maintenance without any obligation. Same for the town on the town property, and then we jointly 50 50 on the uh, also on the, the lower storage. Um, to Mike's point, it would be it's challenging. I don't know how we could do it. It would be nice if we could kind of compel action on the jointly owned buildings, you know, if one of us wanted to make improvements. Uh, but that's something we really want to get into. Um, yeah, the salt shed and the smokehouse, we can address those in a similar way that there, you know, there's no obligation from either the town or the village to pay for the other person's investments or repairs. Uh, I think that's kind of the best we're going to do right now. And that will get us started and at least clear us of any trouble that we might get into about, you know, the, the, that way the village has something clear in front of them when they make the investment in their garage of what's going to happen to it. You know, that you're not, you know, it is basically your garage. The assumption is there, but the town is not going to, you know, invest anything in the village's garage, even though it's a jointly owned property. Brian, what is Mike's point? My point is only on the uh, mill house. That's the only thing I was talking yeah. about, owning it outright completely with no village ownership at all. That's what I'm talking about. I, I was more than the, <laughs> what you said about having about how long it's been to get okay. and how difficult it can be when there's well, something jointly owned that one boy I follow you. Of course, I follow you. Yeah. <laughs> and we would still have that, at least for the time being, with if nothing else, at least the lower storage where, you know, maybe we can transfer that over in the future, but uh, we're not really ready to make that decision right now. Right. Well, we need to get a little more quick as we can. I think the memorandum can be fairly easily drawn up. Uh, unfortunately, when we listen to Doug and his <laughs> legal legal stuff come into play, uh, the actual conveyance of buildings and ownership and rights on jointly owned property, uh, it may be a little more complicated. We'll probably have to involve attorneys. But it, it definitely would have to involve, but I know, I would not want to draw up a title yeah. that myself. I would want to involve an attorney in something like that. It always does. But I can write an uh, MOU about for us that just kind of lays it out a little bit more clearly about, you know, that the village knows that when it's investing in the village garage, it's still jointly owned property. You're not buying the garage from us. You're not getting, you're not going to receive any funds from us. Uh, it's like just, a general uh, gentleman's agreement going both ways with the buildings, basically. It's basically, it's how we've been operating, but it's something that's right. Okay. All right, so basically you want to do Municipal building joint, all decisions are made by both boards. The uh, mill house, we can give all responsibility to you. you start heading down the path of getting that turned over to you officially. Our garage, the local electric department is ours. Your, your maintenance garage is yours. The uh, smokehouse is the village, and the cold storage is jointly owned. Yeah, joint, joint responsibility. If we all sort of agree in concept, then you can write it up. Then we can head down that. The memorandum exactly. should be fairly easy. To that point, though, this is all 100% left on Brian. Speak up, please. I said to that point, this is 100% left on Brian. Oh, well, that's the thing. Meredith should do our but that's your guys' decision. She can contact it. You said you said be easy enough for you to draft it up, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, it, it would be 
it would be great if I kind of had some assistance with it. Okay. You guys willing to put Meredith the task with Brian to just wrap it up? Yeah. Add it to her projects list. If you only accept it, accept it. I expect Meredith is probably going to be pretty familiar with the situation and the needs of the village that all the department has in. Right. Those buildings, so it would be very helpful to have her. So the so the so the way I drafted it, the way I just spoke it with joint responsibility, and then each you know town village taking taking the the, the town takes the mill house, their garage, <laughs> built in the salt shed, and then the town takes the smokehouse, the really? village, village takes the smokehouse, the our our utility uh, building, and we share this building and the cold storage. How to draft it up in the MOA? So there's one, there's that, I don't know what we even call it. There's that shell of a building that you call it the leaning it's tower. It's the leaning tower. I don't know who uses it. I don't know. The village does. The village, does the town use it at all? We do. We store a couple things that are uh, mostly for the winter, but it's mostly used by the village. It, uh, I think it needs some fairly immediate attention in terms of maintenance. I think it's, uh, it looks to me, it doesn't look terribly safe to me. So is that behind the Behind yeah, the, the village, that yeah, shell skeleton left oh. over from the mill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Below the gas pumps. Got an eyesore. For... Yeah. But behind the gas pumps. It's right. not, I mean, it is an eyesore, but it is dangerous. And I don't think that we should actually, I would prefer that we ask our town people to find other places if we have stuff back there. Is it something in it? Or is there something that can be done? There's miscellaneous stuff and there's no enclosed walls. There's one wall. It's valuable you know, based falling over. I think, yeah. um, okay. I think you're right. But it, it probably should just be demolished. Um, so what are you saying, Beth? If the down gets out and stuff out of it, we'll give it to the village. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> great. So what are we selling you the mill house for? <laughs> Okay, there's going to be some, uh, there's going to be cost in there to, to transfer that over to us unless we're taking the village off the hook for all liability. So we're actually doing the village a favor. Yeah. Yeah, I never heard of that in real estate. So, um, it's so. not really real, real estate. Do, do we have a need to keep it, first of all? Well, again, yeah. we need to, to and have it, so they, well, we need to talk, we need to involve our staff in this. So yeah. Our, yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know exactly what the town uses that for, but yeah. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with what's going on down there either. So let's, let's can we table that one, that part, and agree upon the rest of it, and then what part of the well, the the, uh, the lean to shed thing. Lean to be, I, I think it, at the, the very tower, least, leaning tower of trouble. At the very least, we need somebody to go down there and take a uh, do an inspection, some some okay. sort, just to look and see how we can mitigate the liability. I, I'd be willing to go and take a look at it. Like, I don't anybody from your board. Take down the wall that's falling in. I'm not a, you know, an engineer. I'm not an engineer not. either, but you know, we're both, just you see out. what's safe is safe, right? Get together with Will. We, we both own them. No, I'm good. <laughs> Are you safe? Well, but we need buy it from the building. I board. can meet with Will if okay. you want somebody from both boards. Yes, that's yeah. general consensus. Okay. And who owns the fuel pumps down there? Would they be in this? That's there true. another one that's joined in. Yeah. Joined yeah. Who's responding? The metering is terrible there. I would, I would like to make, if I can make a suggestion, let's make these two separate issues of the improvements down there, taking this down and getting a new meter out for the uh, gas pump as a separate issue from ownership and responsibility from these things that are, you know, where we've got our immediate investment. I, mean, I think it's a step forward if we can do, if we can take care of the easy stuff tonight and then make a commitment to move forward on the other stuff. At least we make a step forward and then we can build on that versus throwing it all out tonight and trying to do it all again later. That's, that's my suggestion. Yeah. So, so another thing just to complicate things, but the, the uh, Brownfield study did envision this whole parcel kind of being re- uh, Developed into a commercial recreation space you know, by making these commitments and putting a lot of money into a new building. You know, we're basically making a decision not to go with that 
approved that it was a vision. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the the offer for that was to take the property that you guys have down here, and that's not going to work for the village. And you know, the location we're at is is really the best for the village. They walk at the door, they're on the, they're on the sidewalks within a couple hundred yards. Oh yeah, no, trying to take trying to take skid steers through the through the ledge cut here. It's just the liability is just beyond. So I mean, I mean, I, I mean, we, you know, in the, in the dream world, that would be great to be able to do that down there, but not to the detriment of, of our employees. Understood. Just wanted to. Yep. Okay. So. The concept, if we all on the thing. Oh, the reason I was thinking that is because. If you guys end up putting a million dollars into a building down there, and then ten years from now we decide to sell, we own it 50 50 but you I just invest. <laughs> Village kind of gets right. Uh, right. the short end of the stick in that scenario. So but I don't. I don't. I mean, if it's 50 50 I don't. I don't think that the village would agree to sell. You know, so that's that becomes a, a sticky wicket right there. You know, if we don't start separating these things now, then down the road, if you get a great deal and we say no, mm -hmm. it kind of puts your kibosh to the whole thing. So I just, you know, it makes sense to try to separate these things out now so that yeah. one reduces your liability for the building that you jointly own with us um, on paper, you know, gets that gentleman's agreement. We're, we're willing to, to take responsibility for that building. Uh, at the same time. So I got the little other issue. If you have your uh, computer or phone on using the town's uh, Wi-Fi hotspot right now, and you don't need to, uh, it would help that you could turn it on. Uh, we're out of available users and apps. Thank you. I wasn't either, but I shut it off anyway. I shut my Wi-Fi off too. <laughs> so, uh, we kind of went through the whole thing with Basically, in concept, it seems to have some thoughts of agreement. This is where Brian and Meredith to draw up a memorandum. I'm just, I'm just going to pull my board just so that, so that we're official here. So basically, we're trying to, what, what, what I'm speaking mostly of, is this building here is jointly owned, joint responsibility, joint decisions. <laughs> the uh, mill house will turn responsibility ownership over to the town. The uh, smokehouse ownership responsibility will be in the village. The electric department garage will be um, village responsibility. The maintenance garage for the town will be the town's responsibility. And then the cold storage down below will be a jointly owned joint responsibility. Um, salt shed, salt area, whatever like that is, is also town. So, right. with, so with that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot more to do with this with the rec committee, the gas pumps, the leaning tower of trouble down there, stuff like that. But these, just speaking of those buildings I just mentioned, you know, the trustees, okay, the concept moving forward with setting up, putting that to paper. And by the Kenny, Kenny and, yes. yes, Steve, I saw your lips move. I can't hear you though. Shake your head. <laughs> Yeah, oh, thumbs up. Okay. All right. All right. So our our board is complete agreement with that starting that process. The poll, the select board, the yeah. And Beth, are you on board with it? The concept? As long as we all are going to commit to um, the maintenance that the other party may need. If we're going to have an agreement where we have shared properties that one of our entities is responsible for and heat goes out or electricity goes out and it doesn't impact the other party, um, we would need to, like, I would want that as part of the understanding. And if that's the case, yeah, I'm on board, contingent on our recreation and our garage, uh, our uh, crew being okay with the garage side of it. Okay, we need to get a second swipe at this because after the memorandum was drawn up by Brian and Meredith, it'll have to come back to the two yeah. For yeah. This is just this is just a get it, get it kicked off. Okay. Uh, I'm here. Uh, Doug, Doug's got something more to say. Behind it's much more cheap. Um, I wanted to say that I'm filtering this through my head, and I think what you 
a variety of is because of the need to do things is an authority to act and the responsibility for paying for the action on those things. Right, exactly. And that's what I see yeah. if you've done. And when, when you were talking about later, you know, or, or in one of your conversations, the comments was, well, if we did the work, you know, uh, we aren't going to sell it if you get 50% if we put all the money in it. That's a, that's a question you'll have to get to, but you need to act now. You're going down the river without a paddle and you need your paddle to start doing something. Right, but we need, we need we need to take this step to get this thing started. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so let's get this, let's get this demo way up and then, and from there we can worry about trying to make it more definitive. Is, right. my, is my thought process of that would that would that follow your logic? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I just, I just right. wanted to find because there's been some loose language that talked about ownership or things and, and you're not there. You're no, no, no. We're, other part. We're, we're, we're MOA right, right now language. and then with an intent of hopefully working towards a division of physical yeah. property. Okay. okay. So if there's no further comment, we can move on to the next item, but before we do that. We do have some people here tonight that uh, we don't all know each other. And I'm thinking particularly of President Mills from the college. So it might be beneficial to go around just the introductions. I mean, Eric Osgood from the select board, we've met once before. Good to see you here tonight, President. Hi, Tom, select man. President Hatch, select board. Matt Kenny, select board. Paul Jennison, chair of the trustees. You do pop in chair, uh, vice chair trustees. Ken Toronto, Bill Village trustee. Totally off our trustee. Diane Lumiere, trustee, village trustee. There we go. On the top left hand side, that's Steve. He's Steve right. Hatfield, trustees. And on the right hand side is Beth. Hello, doctor. Nice to see. Nice to not see you again. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll hear your voice shortly. Um, and then maybe, yeah, but Brian, sorry, town administrator. Thank you. Thanks. Donna over there in the back. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. So, did you know who the, uh, well, do you want to go through the around? Start over there, Lloyd. Is there an interest in a position like this? Would the 
whether it's a, a town position, since we have eliminated most of our joint employees, I don't think you would go about creating a new joint employee just having got rid of them. But is there interest in the village trustees in some number of hours uh, of a town employee who is dedicated to doing this kind of task? So when you say we, are you speaking for the select board? Uh, I think I said we a few times. Yes, you did. Um, I have mean, heard it from select board members, from members of the public, and from those trustees that they're that okay. I've heard it from a wide number, wide variety of people that they're, you know, why don't we have somebody like this? Okay. Uh, but I don't think there's been any official discussion at any level about what to do. But we're going to lay the line. So then your chair, buddy. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be a town employee. It could be a village, and you know, we could contract or have some memorandum between us, similar to some of the employees downstairs. And, uh, pay for certain number of hours or whatever the project is. I know uh, when we had an economic development coordinator, uh, depending on what was anticipated or or what was they were doing for a a particular year, the ratio of the town village contribution to the salary changed. And you know, a good example was when Leo was doing the whole Main Street project, uh, that just about absorbed her completely. Yeah. And uh, and I don't know if it was an 80 20 split, it was the vast majority of it was the village because, because that's what she was working on. But it could be either employee if we decide to go forward or something like that. Evan, you look like you want to say something. Ah, oh, it's tricky because it can both be very advantageous, or if you don't get enough grants to cover their salary, it's more money coming out of taxpayers' pockets for an employee. Um, there are grants out there that can be written for grant writers. So if we had that tied into it somewhere where they were having to fund a portion, we being what? Where they had to fund a portion of their salary, and then we, the village and town, could get more grants because of it. Because there, there's a lot of like working grants. It would be advantageous, but if we just fictitiously hire somebody and hope for the best, we could be going back to the town saying we lost the town sixty thousand dollars last year. If we hire another person, and that would be awesome. No, and I and I agree in the way I look at it is that. Uh... If the grants don't pay for their salary with us, we're having a hard time getting uh, a manager. For us to fork a bill for another person, we're going to have to cut back at manager's salary. We're going to have to cut back at manager's hour, uh, hours. And to have somebody move in from wherever they're coming from with less pay and less hours, that's going to hurt on the other end. Like if it was like, I don't know if it actually exists, but like a per diem, somebody coming into it and like, okay, certain grants you get that we can use or some kind of per diem we'd pay you or I don't know how that works. I'd be up for something like that, but paying somebody as an hourly salary or a salary or hourly or something like that, I just, with what we're dealing with, with our manager, that's hard. We had somebody of the caliber of Leia, as I recall, she brought in approximately $14 million to the community. Uh, whether her salary was paid by a grant is immaterial. The $14 million she brought into our community more than paid for her salary. And so, uh, we, granted, we'd be hard pressed to find somebody of her caliber, but I'm sure there's somebody out there. And whether they were paid by a grant or not, one big grant would pay their salary for many years. So I don't think we should worry too much about that. Very true. And I think there are so many organizations out there that will help the grant writer and the economic development person um, that we will succeed in getting grants. I don't think that we have to worry too much about that. I just think you need, we need to do something. We are not 
doing anything to make Johnson a place where people want to move, where people want to work, where people want to play. It's, we really need to do something. And I think that some of these ideas that I wrote are really beneficial. I, 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 they're not frivolous. They are very beneficial to a whole bunch of people in this town. And um, I think if we don't give it a try, that we will stay stuck. That's what it feels like right now, is that we are stuck and we, we have NVU, we have Laraway, we have the Vermont Studio Center, and we need to get all of those people together and work with them and get something going so that we do revitalize this town. It is a beautiful town. And if we don't do something like this that I have written up, we're gonna stay stuck. We have people that want to engage. Let's do it. I have a letter from um, Laraway School where they said they will help with whatever it is that we are, whatever it is we come up with. I think I'm hearing the NVU president say the same thing. And I've been talking to the Vermont Studio Center and Elizabeth is saying the same thing. And we have a gem of a town and village. Let's do something. And uh, hey Dee, your letter was really, really good. Thank and you. I know a lot went into it. Um, and you mentioned wanting to read it and I would like to hear you read it because I think there's lots of valuable information you have in there. Okay. Do you mind doing that? I don't mind at all. You can hand a copy of that. So, uh, a few copies here. Make sure you give one to Donna. You read it. Thank you. Um, number one, I would first like to say I think we should talk about vision and branding our village and town. What do we want our town to be? What do we want it to be known for? And what do we want people to come for? When reading the Brown Fields report, it stated we should try to brand ourselves the art capital of Vermont. Elaine Hollins, the former NVU president, coined this branding slogan because she recognized that Johnson was an art hub. Now, the reason we can claim that branding is one, the Vermont Studio Center is the largest international art residency in the world. Two, NVU Johnson is the only state college with a BFA and an MFA degrees. Number three, we have four public galleries, the Julian Scott Gallery at NVU, Red Mill Gallery and Studio Two at the Vermont Studio Center, and Myanmar Gallery on Main Street. Number four, we are currently working on setting up a pottery studio. Number five, there are dozens of public art sculptures on the Mason Green and NVU campuses. For the town with a population of about 3,500 in Northern Vermont, we are art rich. Let's own that and claim the branding art capital of Vermont. Of, of Vermont. Now, some grants I would like to see for branding and economic development is um, a troll scavenger hunt. And I did write the, the website where you can go check them out. They're very cool. People would come from all over the place to see these guys. Uh, number two is an incentive grant for our Main Street, Railroad Street, and the first part of Route 100C. Um, we could hire a professional landscaper to plant and maintain perennial flowers on Main Street, our bridges, 
our welcome signs coming into town on both ends at the Coal Spring, the public library, our village green, and our municipal building. A, park, a public art walk through the village starting at Old Milk Park and ending at NVU. We could have banners of unique artwork created by community members that line our main street. Now, these grants can be incorporated with the Vermont Studio Center and NVU. We can partner with them on these various projects. This is really important, I think. A 2019 report from the National Governors Association found that rural counties with performing arts organizations had three times the population growth and higher household incomes than rural counties without those organizations. It also stated that rural counties with design-driven businesses recovered more quickly from the recession and that two out of three businesses reported that arts and entertainment were important to attracting and retaining workers. People want to move to a vibrant town and vibrant towns attract young people and creative entrepreneurs. Number two, the Brownfield site. We need an economic development person for that project so we can begin making an appealing area and implement the suggestions researched and highlighted by the consultants hired by the town to create the area wide plan. And I've listed some organizations that would be uh, available to us for grants and funding and one of them is ready which is rural economic development initiative and those are for communities under 5,000 population it's to get uh, it's for downtown revitalization you need to demonstrate readiness funds can be used to hire a grant writer and jenna's promise is an example of what ready can help you with and another was a broadband um they helped the town and they they um, were given $60,000 for that, and we certainly need to work on that. Um, there's AARP, there's VNRC, there's placemaking projects, tools and resources, Vermont Better Places Program, resources for community and economic development, Memorial County Planning Commission, Memorial Economic Development Court, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development, ACCD Village Center Resources Guide, Brownfield, Brownfield's Revitalization Fund Program, and for the Covered Bridge, there are historic preservation resources in Vermont and nationally. There's also a Vermont Housing Incentive Program, which isn't available at this time, but we would need to keep checking uh, to see if monies become available. And there are monies out there. The person that I talked to from um, the Rural Development Commission told me that in our lifetime, this the money that we're that's coming down the pipe now is not going to happen for a very long time after this. So I, I think we really need to get a vision and move forward with that vision. Um, so by hiring an economic development grant writer, we can begin working on that vision and implementing it. Number three, the Jewett property. We need to decide what to do with that land, making it more attractive to sell it more easily Let's discuss how we can work together on this property to make it sellable. An idea for that site would be a slaughterhouse, a creamery, a commercial kitchen. And when I talked to that person at uh, the Economic Development Commission, um, he told me someone had just called talking about a slaughterhouse. And so I, I think we need somebody that will talk to all these organizations and we need to do something. 
Um, so number four, consider buying vacant buildings on Main Street. Make them usable and sellable to interested entrepreneurs. Number five, get the word out that both the town and village has revolving loan funds that are not being used at very low interest rates. The village currently has 200,000 and you can get it at 2% lower than the prime rate and it's for mostly for residences and the town has largely the same that targets businesses. And number six, create a marketing and branding plan in coordination with NVU, who is going to be doing marketing and branding at NVU again, now that they have merged. So I say let's get a seat at the table and work together for our branding and marketing efforts. I would like to make two motions. One of them is to brand Johnson, the art capital of Vermont, and to make a motion that the village and town hire a joint 30 hour a week economic development grant writer person to further the vitality and prosperity of Johnson. Thank you for listening. Can we take action even notice for the point? Certainly the economic development part of it. That's up to the first thing I'd like to say, Diane, did a lot of work on this, and I really appreciate it. And thank you bring it, for bringing it to the board. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I did. I talked to a lot of people. I called and was in contact with them a lot, and this is what I got. And I think it's valuable, and I think it's good for us to discuss. This also proves to me that, uh, you know, lately both boards have been meeting uh, kind of at a regular basis, but in the past, it's been like months and months and months before we have a meeting. You know, I'd actually like to see a meeting between both boards at least once a month, really, for us to discuss things, because we all have the best interests of the community at heart. And sometimes we have our petty differences, but we need to put them aside and work together for a common good for this community. Says the man who plans to get off the board. If not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't decided quite yet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if a monthly meeting is necessary, Mike, at this point. But I, I do agree with your sentiment that um, you know, let's work on the things we agree on and move forward with those. Let's check those things off our list and slowly whittle away the things that we may disagree upon. That's right. That's uh, work on the things that we agree on because put the many differences aside for another day. Because those things we can push through and actually start checking things off and done this. Uh, 100%. The, uh, uh, Diane, your, as to your motion for branding the, uh, the uh, village and or town, um, I don't think it's germane to topics that have been forewarned. Um, I would love to see. Um, the town take that up at their next meeting, and I want to honor agenda for our next meeting. Great. Um, if Eric can agree to put that on their meeting, and then, and then we can uh, at least make motion and, and start discussing it. Um, there's, there's the depth of your paper is phenomenal. Um, I, I wish I'd had more than you know 30 minutes to read it two hours before the meeting. Um, but you know, I mean, you put so much work into it that it can't. It got printed when it got printed. Um, I don't think for myself that um, I've had enough time to uh, just absorb the, the mass of information you have in this to be able to make any movement on it tonight. Um, but what I would like to say is that I'd like to get a, I mean, if maybe uh, Brian would have a, a ballpark on a cost for um, a uh, grant writer position i can do some research on what going rates are and try and make a cost estimate for it i don't have anything prepared okay um what people are making um yeah so, so yeah i can't do a cost estimate tonight okay um bang you have an idea of, of i'm not a researcher john have you come across any dollar figures um, no no i only 
the woman that I did call uh, a while back, she said it would depend on if you were going to hire her just for some grants that you already knew about, that she would have to take into consideration what the grant was, how much time she would have to spend on it, and she would charge for the whole thing. Right. Another person was, um, I think, $100 an hour. Mm -hmm. If you hired that person just for writing a grant that you that you had, okay. that you already knew about, this person will be the grant hunter, right? Bill? So I, from, from myself, and I want to propose this to, to the trustees, as um, obviously with our budget from last year, we're going to be really skinning by to get through this year and still have any money left over or not being a deficit. Um, I'd like to get a cost, what it would cost to do your proposal, an in-house grant writer, economic developer. Um, I'm assuming the town would be amiable to a 50-50 split until the grants were actually coming in and then go like we did before where they were spending more time on village side or town side that the, the, the salary would be prorated in, in that manner. I've got a pretty big concern with how we structure that particular piece. Um, I have a, a real, uh, based on experience, um, problem with hiring joint employees. What would you say that? With hiring joint having joint employees. Okay. You think that that puts us and I can, if it's, if it's people want to pursue it, um, I can elaborate more, but I think it puts us, uh, certainly the select board and potentially the trustees in a really tenuous, uh, position. Um, having one employee uh, reporting to two different boards uh, creates just an inherent problem. So um, there's there are ways to to, to handle that. Um, as Eric was saying, and, you know, what, they're hired and they report to one entity and they're contracted out to the other entity or something like that. Yeah. Well, as long as it was something where, you know, I, I don't disagree with it. Um, you know, if the village hired her or the town hired her and then her or him. Um, I think I was saying her because you said you were speaking to a woman. Um, then if they did work for the other the other the other municipality, um, they would be at a contracted rate basically. Is that what you is that something you'd be able to? Yeah. Okay. So that aside, um, I still would like to have a kind of general idea of what, what it costs. And then what I've proposed to our to my board is that when we do our annual budget, we look at that cost and see if there's something that we can cover. Just to agree to do it tonight, I think is is very irresponsible uh, without actually having the funds to be able to fund it. So I'd be very, very interested in getting getting a cost and then when we do our budget for next year, um, trying to make that fit into the budget. Is that something that the board would agree to? Yep. Um, just to let Casey know, we'll, we'll get to the public after all, board members have uh, had an opportunity to speak. Uh, so, I know from my own perspective, uh, I'm hugely supportive of the economic development position. Um, when Leah was here, to most point, she brought in about 14 million. Uh, when you hire someone like that, you can't think of them as you're going to get grants to pay for their salary. It, it really doesn't work like that because some years, it may be pretty dried up on grants, but uh, typically when you get a grant, you, you administrate it, and that's what really pays the, uh, the person's uh, salary. So they, they do come out, the town and village do come out usually pretty well. Uh, well, they, Leo was less than $14 million, right. so it was a. Yeah. <laughs> and when, when we did have the joint employees, uh, town and village municipal. Uh, Administrator is one person, and economic development coordinator reported to both boards or uh, entities. Uh, that was the original setup, and we decided to split. And the town administrator's position was not able to be a standalone position full time without adding in the uh, economic development part. Uh, the problem that that I have seen is. When Brian's doing his job, 
the economic development get back burner because that's more long term and that's looking for things and, and really a lot of research. And most of his day is spent putting out fires to just run the town. And it's a, it just happens that way. So he spends a way more time uh, just doing administrative work than the economic development portion. Whereas if you had a dedicated person, you benefit from it. So I, I'm hugely supportive of it. I would not tonight feel comfortable supporting a motion to hire someone because we're going to be sitting down doing our budget right off. And I'm, I think it's going to be a, 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 a struggle this year. I think we've got a lot of challenges uh, with the, the inflation that's happening. And I, I'm not sure what we're going to go to the taxpayers with yet. But that's where I would, and when we look at our budget, that's when we can start thinking about how much can we afford that position now, or how many hours a week or whatever. That's sort of where I'm at my part. And I think if we don't go there and, and really try to sell that position, that we, we won't move forward. We won't be doing what we really should be doing to the town and the surrounding, you know, NVU and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. And the last time we did this, that was a separate article to the voters. and. You know, we made the case that we thought there'd be benefit, um, and voters did support it. And maybe that'd be a route we go again and just put it before the vote. Yeah, nah. yeah, um, just a couple smaller points. Um, certainly, and I think you've just scratched the surface of the potential of um, bringing ourselves with, with our uh, as an art capital. I want to say there's also been a, a fair amount of um. Well, a lot of effort put forward and a lot of potential with outdoor recreation in the community. Um, that there's really, uh, this is a really unique geographic location. This is where the trails cross is another, yeah. I think, real opportunity for branding. Um, and I think this is maybe just hyperbole, and I know you didn't mean anything by it, but when you say we're doing nothing to move forward to make this more livable, that um, kind of uh, get me wrong because. Uh, there's, and I'm looking around the room at people who put a lot of blood, sweat, tears into, into doing a lot to move the, the, the community forward. So I just want to put that out there. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I heard some talk this evening about the cops. Well, granted, this is going to be a very difficult year, I think, to balance our budget or to try to get as close as we can. But there is a cost if we do not do anything. Uh, I'm going to kind of share a little bit of what we talked about today. That we we need to strike while the iron's hot and while there's money available. And this money is going to dry up one of these days. And uh, if we don't jump on the train, we're going to miss it. And, uh, we've got to do something sooner than later. Yeah, and I think we need to do it both boards together so that we. Um, so that we do it together and we get stuff done. I, I think that would be a really great thing and very beneficial for both, both the village and the town. I agree with you. I just I'd just like to state for the record, Eric, that I agree with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to make sure you write that one down. <laughs> uh, um, oh, go ahead, Beth. I was just going to say that, um, you know, when you talk, when we hear the number $100 an hour, that is somebody who is a um, freelance contractor, likely. Um, and if we were to hire somebody, I would imagine that their rate would be closer to 25 or 30 uh, an hour, maybe. And that might even be a little bit high. And, but to the point of you get, you have, you have to invest to get something back. Um, and what are we investing in? The thing that just strikes me, and I know you select board members, you'll fall out of your chair in hearing this. So brace yourself. But 
um, an ec economic developer would support some of the higher priority items that we have on our list of the select board that we don't get very far in. We don't frankly talk about them nearly enough. Um, so um, I think that is really an important thing to consider as we have these discussions. Um, and it would be good to be prepared as we go into budget season, because I intend to be highly critical going into budget season too, um, but be prepared with what the funding opportunities are and how we could position um, if we were interested in either bringing to the voters or making decisions on bringing an economic developer in. Uh, make sure we have some understanding on what the funds are out there to help support paying that type of a position. And, you know, we could hire, in theory, hire somebody in um, a temporary, a long-term temporary position that is grant funded. Um, I understand grant money dries up and we just need to be strategic about what we are looking for. Um, so I really appreciate all the work that's gone into this. And I um, hope that the discussion doesn't die and that we keep talking about what we can do and we don't talk about what we can't do um, because we need to have, we need to be focused on what we can do right now um, and keep taking those steps forward. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. So I just wanted to pull Steve because I got the board here as far as um, taking this up for our uh, budget year for next year, as opposed to trying to vote on monies we don't have right now. Yeah, I'd like to take it up as soon as possible. Yeah. There's no further board members that want to comment on this side. Uh, if we can open it up to the public. So I, I was curious what this would look like from from in the youth perspective, and what, whether this would assist the college or a partnership. Well, um, first of all, the uh, the word I use since I've got here is it, it doesn't do MBU any good to try and raise its vote if we don't participate in raising all votes around us. But we've got to attract people because of the community. It's not just the students on the hill, it's our faculty and staff. So we need a vibrant community to bring in the quality faculty and staff to make the run the institution. So, We've got to improve the attractiveness of the community on the one uh, coming to the outside. Uh, and I know what I'm facing with recruitment right now. So anything that you were thinking of doing to, to try to invest in the vibrancy of the community, MDU wants to be part of it because we have to sell the whole community. We can't, we can't do it with just the school itself. Um, and, and the second thing about it is the, um, I've heard both the arts and the uh, outdoor rec, I believe both of them. I think we've got a phenomenal opportunity to have both areas. I'm, I come from, I'm a Montana resident and I came here and I was shocked at the lack of information I had to do the things I like to do in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. I could not find out where I could get access on this river to fly fish. I could not find out by coming into this village to find out where I could put a canoe in. So there's so much you're not doing when you have a, a gem of a resource all around you. And it's the same way with the arts. I could not find out about the facilities that were here. And so um, you, you really have the, the backbone of something, but you're not doing it. And this comes back to your point about the branding as you said, all the arts. And I will agree with my predecessor, Elaine, on her point about the art center. But remember, I've been doing this my whole life, I've been around a lot. You gotta have a brand promise. Call yourself the art center. Well, if I drove into town, how would I have that promise fulfilled? And I, I'm telling you, you don't have a way to promise. You don't have to make a case. So I think you need a plan, a strategic plan. And the ADU will be fully engaged with you to develop that plan and willing to invest resources to get that up because we need you to prosper for us to prosper. Um, and I, 
You know, and I'll give you a perfect example. We are recruiting right now five faculty members, five high level uh, faculty members. Our applicant pool is all out of state. They're the best we out there. So are we going to be retracting with what we can offer this community? I'm not sure. So that's that's my point. We want to be partners with you. We're willing to do it because we won't prosper without you prospering. But we've got to have a plan. And like I said, I love the idea of the art center. But what's the brand promise? Don't put that name out there. Until you're ready to have that person show up and be able to fulfill that promise. So you need a plan to, to do it. And then finally, to come back to a grant writer, and I've been in that business for a long time. You got, you got to think about what you're going to look for. And I'll be blunt. If you think there's money out there now, and I know there is, especially in higher ed, you got to hire an experienced person. Someone who's walked the walk and talked the talk, and they're not going to be cheap. You hire someone who's on the curve uh, going up the ladder, which is okay. You want to bring in people who have the potential for success, but you better say this is a two to three year investment before you add up the totals to see if you've got a return on that. You won't get it the first year. You might get something the second. It'll take three years. But if you want to pay off right now because you know there's money out there, then you got to go to the top notch person and they're going to cost you more. So that's, that's two points on that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my input on it. But as far as wanting to partner with you in this, I'm all in. But we got to have a plan. we got to be able to get the people that are, are going to deliver on that brand. So, yeah. Thank you, President. And anybody wants to know where to fly fish, you got to talk to Doug. Okay. He's not going to tell you the good spots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've already learned that. Yeah, yeah. I even got sucked into buying an out of state license two days before the season. <laughs> 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 my world people map for the Memorial River Paddlers Trail. With all the pudding spots here. Right. They're trying, to find, they're trying to find these things. Well, everybody knows Doug has it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but you got to raise this one. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, yeah. it's you all the uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's simple as putting a QR code right there at the junction of 150. <laughs> really, that's what they do in Livingston, Livingston Montana, where I'm from. There's a train pattern. And trains went down, and now it's an art center for central Montana. Time's up. Yeah. Time's up. Where are we going? <laughs> and, and you drive into uh, off 90, and all you have to do is pick up your phone on the highway sign with the QR code, and it tells you where the Lamani Art Center is. That's it tells you where more damn art studio is. It tells you everything. And you're still on 90. You haven't left the entry. That's something that we should be able to put together. Yeah. yeah. Easy enough. Yeah. All right. We'll put Dr. Sure. Great. Okay. So I think this is great. We've got a wonderful job. The uh, LEDC, I'm chair of the board up there. You guys have a uh, certain branch you're looking for. Our executive director said, Keep an eye out for it. That would be a place to start. Um, but like John said, you got out of the plan on what you're looking for. One thing I haven't heard anything about tonight, and I hate to bring on the parade, but we haven't talked about matching funds. I mean, that's, um, I got a few grants and I can add up to quit. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. The maintenance um, afterwards. I think maintenance afterwards. Greg, can you repeat that? What was it? Matching funds. You said grants are usually 100% match. You got to consider the matching funds. Yeah. So it's just a, you know, you're not just hiring somebody. If you get lucky to get these grants, and there's going to be some more money that's going to be ponied up. And you might be able to get another grant to match a grant. 
I'm not saying that. We got a grant for a grant writer for Dennis Promise. That was pretty impressive, I thought. But I think um, the other thing is the uh, maybe a college intern could help fill out some of the easier stuff on the grants. But you're going to, we found uh, this lady in Burlington, Diane Metterhoff, and uh, she's a property doc. And uh, I think for one grant, she charged us $7,000 to put it in, but it was uh, a big, big grant. So, but she was also teaching our staff how to write grants. You know, she's that type of person where she's like, hey, I'll, you know, you, you have Amy and Olivia with me and I'll help them break a grant too, you know? So those are things you can look at. Um, I think John's right on the uh, art center. I, I personally think that should go out to a public vote before we do that, because um, maybe not everybody- As far as branding. Right. Branding. Yeah, yeah I think the branding thing is, is really important because you know, if we have something to sell, then we people may come and kind of honing in on it. What we've heard so much with Jenna's promises is you've got to have a laser focus on where you want to be. And because uh, we get people from all different kinds of nonprofits that want us to steer right and steer left. And we politely say that we're steering straight and we're going to continue on the recovery um, plan that we have laser vision on. So. That's something we have to think about in this town. Uh, what is our vision? And like John said, you know, we need a plan. But uh, there is going to be a lot of money coming down the road, and some of it may come without a match. I think I, 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 I understood it. People, the uh, government was just kind of dump a bunch of money in every town. You know, if that's the case, then it's going to come with stipulations on what you can and can't do with it. But uh, there's going to be quite a bit of money coming down. Um, what else did I have here? Yeah, you've got a nice uh, setup here. I think this is a, this paper is a good start to uh, um, what what we should be looking at to to brand or to come up with a plan. Um, to do it property, you know, I almost think um, it may be time to think about selling that project to a developer. Um, that maybe uh, can get get some of the things done that you want to get done. Uh, I don't think the town has the resources. Um, I support buying it. I think it was good to, to have it. So maybe you guys can have some input on where it goes from here. But if you don't see much money coming down the road, uh, might be an option to consider. Um, and then uh, I guess that's all I had on this. I think this paper is great and it's a good start, but you got to be you got to be thinking about matches and uh, the most feasible way to write grants. And I think honestly, without getting strapped to a salary person with benefits, it might be cheaper just to hire a good grant grant writer. And then when the grant's done, she's done, right? So I I think I. Kind of recommend that. Uh, thanks for your Thank let me for, speak. Did Casey have? She had her hand up earlier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks. All the points I was thinking of have been covered now. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. So, uh, in terms of the staff person, the uh, town plan and village plan is going to expire in two years. So, that is the new kind of thing. Now, I would prefer that you lobby the legislature for a 10 year plan as opposed to an eight year plan. If you're extended for 10 years, I mean, this idea of rewriting the constantly is. BS, but we have we we're supposed to do it. I don't know what the penalty is that we got. But it'll take it'll take time and frankly the planning commission. Let's make some volunteer to do it all myself. I think the planning commission individuals have to do it. Uh 
in terms of grants, Greg, I'd like to emphasize Greg's point is they're not free money. People think it's free money. It's not. There's matches, there's staff time, there's your time. And, uh, but the biggest problem is the matches. The, uh, and they come with conditions. If you have to do it a certain way, whether it's hard plan or whatever it conforms to hard plan or not, you have to do it a certain way. So I, I'm not a big fan of, of bringing in all this stimulus money, if you will, for lack of a better term, because that's what it is. It's the, the government has decided that these are worthy causes. And then we get to buy into it and, and spend our own money to further their agenda. So I, I'm not a real big fan of that. So you got projects, like you've got a list, I know you've got a list that if someone finds relative grants for the things that we need and exactly. have to do, that's, that's that, worthwhile. That's what Meredith's been doing. Like our electric truck. Yeah. And, that, and the question about America, that brings another thing. How are you going to find a competent person? You guys are having a heck of a time finding a new Yeah. And you want a skilled person. Is, is it on? John. 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 Today, you need to get a skilled person. And where are you going to find it? So you put money in your budget for a skilled person, and then where are you going to find it? Very stuff. <laughs> but she's a contract person. Wow, well, we've got this lady that we work for. Is it all right for me to speak? Yeah. Um, this Diane Matter Matter Bomb, I think the name is. But we we have Amy and Olivia who wants to elect one. And you know what? They weren't they, they didn't take they well they, we did this Diane, uh, she's a wonderful person. She helped us, she taught us uh, really, even though she knew the you know, we might not have heard of some of the words, but uh, she's pretty sharp, and that's the way to go. And I agree with also the folks in here. It would be nice to approach the town up somehow. And, uh, you know, I saw the sidewalk over here on Pearl Street this year. That turned out nice. We did some beautiful work on the library, which, you know, I drive by quite often. So we are going slow. But you know, we are seeing some private investment in town that's spurring things up, you know. So I don't think it's all lost, but I do think a good branding, a good plan is well worth it. Um, I just wanted to say that I think the Will County Planning Commission we're governed by state statutes and we're around to help assist municipalities and Grant writing in economic development videos. And um, there also can be sometimes where if you were looking into something and you didn't want to actually hire somebody, there could be a contract. I'm not the person to do that, but that could be an idea of if you didn't want to have this person for a certain number of hours, it could also be an interim plan because you were trying to hunt for some, somebody um, that you could contract with. I just want to echo that, that if our, our focus is going to be on obtaining grants, OCP is the other great part. Um, if our focus is on more nebulous economic development, the things that the research, the planning, all the other things that go into it that we don't realize for one, two, three, or more years, that, that's not really what LCBC is going to be able to provide for us. We need both, uh, ultimately, but uh, if our focus is grant writers, we, do, we can get assistance for grant writing right now. What's up? Um... If we were ready to go, we wanted to do it. Um, hire somebody. It's very young. Um, we would need to be budgeting for it right now. Basically, next month. Budget our budget pass in uh, March. Hopefully, pass in March. Take that in June. July. 
What's what's the village's budget cycle? I always forget. Calendar year. So you would budget for it now? No, because you passed your budget for next year already. No. No, no. We have you passed your budget after the year's already started. Okay, so we could actually start hiring, get somebody on the ground uh, starting in July. Get the lead. Yeah. And I know our manager that we're hiring, that's going to be part of it too, is grant writing for her, her or him also. Uh, is that going to be a full-time person? Or is yes. Uh, I think it's going to be a full-time person, but they're going to do basically like the Meredith did. 30 hours a week. 30 hours a week. Well, Meredith was 30 hours, so you're hiring for 30 hours. Yeah. 30 hours. I believe that's what it is. Yep. For grant writing and managing and all that. Same thing Meredith did. But we're having a hard enough time finding that. Finding a grant writer that we know 100% is going to be like he was saying on that. That was an understatement. Upper echelon, you know what I mean? Right. You say there's money out there for grant writers right now? There is some money out there for grant writers, but my big point for getting grant writers is we have partners like LCPC and LEPC. We have regional partners that would help us obtain grants. If we can identify a project, at least a project, if we can identify a project and a source, they'd be very good. See, and I like that idea. Like, we got a sidewalk to do or whatever, go to the person like Greg was saying, saying, hey, we're looking to do this. Can you help us write it and everything? And, you know, pay them for doing that. Yep. Then they need to get a grant to pay them to look for grants. <laughs> They can well, no, we wouldn't have to do that. It'd be worth it to us, you know, them bringing in a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is and pay them you for the work. Grant money out there for grant writers, right? I might get it. So yeah. we'd be better off to do that than, you, than we would to wait till July uh, because you know, there's a lot of money that's gonna, gonna slide on by before July. I think we can do both and. My recommendation for this is that there's more to it than just grants. I mean, we're spending a lot of time talking about grant writing, but like we mentioned before, there's props associated with any of the grants. Right. Not every problem is going to be solved by grant writing. That's true. And right. we would benefit a great deal from uh, somebody doing the other parts of the economic development plan. I'd rather piece of the pie than no pie. Yeah. No, we, we could try and identify a few projects and go out there, but we, we also have to identify the matching funds for one. True. Um, I think we have a whole bunch of projects. We yeah. already prioritized them. I'll just yeah. say from the select board side. And we have trouble with the planning and the time and all that happens on a regular day to day basis. Um, and also planning the projects. I hear you and support you totally, Brian. And I hear what you're saying too, Mike. Like if there's money out there and we're not going after it, then we're losing it. But if we go after it and we get it and we don't have a plan, first of all, we're not going to get it. And if we don't, we do get it and we don't have somebody to act on our plan, we're going to lose it because we're not going to meet the requirements of the grant. That's right. That's why we have to go by what you said. Have a priority. And I think to Brian's point, uh, there are people there out here that can write a grant for us and administrate it. What we're lacking is the person, you know, like the flood mitigation grant we just barely got. Yeah. That was dumped on us. We, uh, with help from LCPC, got the grant. Uh, written and we've been accepted the problem what we're lacking is somebody out there looking for grants you know, it's not something that brian has the luxury of time to spend searching out for grants you know we've been working on this jewett property for years and, and you know well, they, brian puts a lot of time into it but we need somebody just focused and dedicated to those kind of projects well, and we also need to dedicate money for matching funds. We made with the Jewett property that we didn't want to put taxpayer dollars into it. 
and without taxpayer dollars, we're not seeing the yeah. the opportunities. That there are there are opportunities, but a million and a half dollar opportunity will still cost the town, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's the Charles and Greg. It's not free money, but it is a multiplier effect on what we the money we do spend. Um, but the, having this person in this position focused and dedicated, they would find those grants that, that you have found that require some kind of a match, and then they work on getting monies from other sources to cover that match. You know, from I don't remember how the village did it, but there was very little money put up by the village for the whole Main Street, and that was a, a five million dollar job or something. Yeah. There are ways to do it. And we just don't have the person focused on it. Could I speak to the Main Street plan? The Main Street plan happened because the Planning Commission had the plan in order. You know, we were we were ready, and when the opportunity came, we were able to pick it up. It actually uh, Leahy's office called looking for somebody to contact because they wanted to give us money, and and. Uh, uh, Joe. Kathy Black got the call, you know, and did she go over and talk to you or something like that? And and the grant came that haphazardly, but it only happened because we were ready for it. Your that was the planning commission, and that was Leia being ready, you know, uh, for something that if we had known there was a grant out there, you know, I mean we could have done, but you know. That happened only because we had the capability in the community to, to receive this. You know, you have to be ready to receive it. That person hire, that you hire creates that capability, as well as the specific project. I've been going to write to the trustees for a long time when I saw the beautiful job they did on Pearl Street, just to say hello to the editor, um, that I think that if you wanted to plan right now or a project, you ought to do the sidewalk out to the trailer park, out to Jolly's. You ought to figure that out. If there's a grant available, you ought to do that. You know, there's something that's worthwhile to the to the community. Um, you don't have to pick that one, but I'm sure you can find some other ones. If you, examples of things that you could choose to do, that you could get LEDC or LCTC to write. Grants for, and then of course you haven't talked about matching funds, but you can find out if it's worthwhile. You know, having traveled across the country before the pandemic through Canada, through the United States, these small rural towns, many of them don't have the cards that we have, uh, and they're blowing away. We still need to play our cards well, or we aren't going to keep our resources here and get people to move here. People don't know about. The fly fishing spots. They don't know. The recreational aspects of assets of this community are tremendous. Yep. They have to be made public. Yep. I think, right? yeah, I think first, you got you to gotta look at your action items here. I mean, the first one is going to has to be figure out what you think you want in this town. Well, what is it? Like Doug said, the sidewalk or the extension of water and sewer along so we can get more development. Infrastructure is uh, not failing. You know, what is it that you're looking for? And then if you narrow that down, you can call LEDC, you can call your your United States rep and senators, talk to their staff. Their staff is reaching out to us in the last two weeks and sending us grants for them to promise because they know what we're doing. We know what we know what the next step is. That's the first thing you got to do. What's what is it in this town that you want? And you know, you're not going to be able to take a year to point this out. So you know, you got to walk around the streets here and say, this needs repair. The sidewalk up Railroad Street to the ball fields is really not that great from the bridge on. You know, uh, there's just you, you got to figure out what it is you want, and that's you're going to have to do that pretty quick with that money's coming down the pipe. And then LEDC and the Wild County Planning Commission and, and your representatives can look out for those grants because they're posted all the time. These guys they come across their desk all the time. We we've seen three in the last two weeks on 
stuff to help you in the promise. But, and uh, so that's that's number one for your action plans. It, it really, until you get that step done, everything else we've talked about here is speculation, honestly. So you, know, you, you gotta you gotta make this simple and easy to play. You you can't you know expect the whole world here. You've got to get a certain one or two project. This is what we want, and then later we focus on those. It's it's a good point, but also to best point, like we've done that as a select board, like we have that list. Um, we prioritize it. We're, we're, that's and, and so the, the answer is that's where our focus needs to be. Then, right? Yeah, I think so. you have that list, and you should get that list out, prioritize it, and then call your reps and your senators and your you know the dean dean. I think she's with. Uh, Sanders and there's a I can't think of all the names, but they're there. Right, right. And, and they will respond. And even even like Dan Noyes, I mean he's always got his nose to the ground. Yeah, so why County explains to me they don't they know what's going on. You know, there's help out there that doesn't cost much to start for. You know, then you can kind of play the field and say, let's see where it's going. Great conversation. This letter spurs it's gonna spur a lot of conversation. Conversation and thinking what's good for this now. What is the next step? Are we all well? I think the next step to a select board is uh, when we have our budget meeting, taking up this whole economic development director position. And, that's our that's our that's going to be our course of action this budget year comes in we're start talking about that and if the voters approve it in march that's when we can get the road now and you guys will know in april if you're yeah. approved yeah. Yeah. As, as far as the branding goes i mean i think if, i think the board i like talk about it at our next meeting and kind of hash that out at our meeting and stuff like that. And then obviously I'd, I'd like to well, come before the voters. So maybe at our, our annual meeting when we would have a proposal for from the board on how to move forward with that. And I almost would think that whoever this person is would be, you know, that could be part of their job is to get to organize and, and go out there with branding and get different groups involved and it's that would be part of the development that we're going to be looking at is is how we're branded and they could be driving that well i think the trustees because we have merit it as half time that we have money project to, manager right? and we have one less lineman or up to pay so we have money there to hire somebody like greg said diane Bitzinger. And we picked the, the job that we want, the project that we want to have done, and we hire her to start now because we have the money now. And if we can get her going, um, then I think that's what we do. We don't wait till later. Either way, we can, we can definitely discuss this at our at our next meeting. Because that's two different directions. Are we that's thinking totally two different? Yeah. yeah. Are we thinking of hiring a consultant? Because we could hire a consultant tonight. I like the consultant part of that way. Or are we paid per having a position similar to what we had to lay at, and it's an employee? Well, I mean, there's advantages for both. Yeah. But, but I mean, if we pick the project and Diane <clears throat> is able to write the grant for it, then she's just for that particular project. So if we, if we both decide, both boards decide later on, like in July to hire somebody, that's what we do then. But we have the money now to hire somebody to do that. You sure? We have Meredith, Meredith was full time, she was, never full time. Pardon? she was never full-time. 30 hours. 
she works 30 hours. So we, she works 15 now. And so we had the rest of that money and we could do something like that. That's, it's, it's nothing we take action on tonight. No, I so, know. So that's, just yeah, really but I, like I said, that will we'll have Rosemary please put on our agenda for our next meeting. And, uh, we'll definitely uh, cash that out. <laughs> And that's where we take a, a, a decision to do because we also have a lot of outdoors activities here yes. and it's just that's where we really have to yeah. figure that out. And the outdoor I think is a lot easier to bring. Mm -hmm. you know, it's already there, no maintenance involved. Yeah. If you have arts in the front here one week, come in six months later, it's the exact same thing. It's under it's under it's under required, it's under draw we can do it. Whereas if you've got a place, you know, you get canoeing, you got fishing, you got swimming, you got hiking, hiking you got hunting, you got you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Greg, what did you say? Something to do with art or artisan? I, you mean, said? I just try to include more people. And yeah. I okay. said we could umbrella kind of most people in town. But that, then again, you're getting away from your local and your labor. Okay. Good. I mean, I love art. It's great. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Good on this? I think we've done as much as we can do. Okay. Uh, joint meeting, discuss merger. Uh, I believe that some representatives from the town and the village have talked a little bit about uh, kind of planning for this meeting, about you know what that's going to look like. Uh, and we had wanted to try and actually start meeting sometime in January. Yeah, what's uh, your Wednesdays and Fridays? Wednesdays and Fridays, yeah. So we got uh, Wednesdays and Fridays are best for BJ. I'm available except, I mean, Thursdays are out for me starting in January. I think the 12th. What about? The 12th. The 12th. The 12th. I'm open for the 12th. Yeah, that works for me. Good for me. Steve, Diane, 12th work for you. Uh, January 12th is yeah. what day of Friday? Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kenny? Yeah, I don't care. So we're okay with 12th. You guys? This is going to be the whole board. It's just not committed. Yeah, this will be the whole Brian, I have a little more information on all of this from the group that met too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so if we're set out on the 12th, that's awesome. Um, we met back in early November. It's been a little while. Um, just pulling up my notes, but um, we have a proposal for the agenda for that meeting. Um, and Eben and Steve and BJ, if you have anything you would like to add, by all means. Um, but basically having three topics. Um, one is just a rules of engagement, like how we're going to engage on the merger discussions. And we have some suggestions for how to get started. Um, but the bullet is, you know, rules of engagement. The second is um, identifying work items needed and then maybe coming up with like uh, possibly subcommittees for actually working those items. Um, but for example, um, defining gaps in that report that was published, because I think that there are some pretty significant gaps for uh, as an example of that. And then um, also working, maybe it's the same group, I don't know, but working on recommendations for continuing with that report or not, um, not making the decision, just making a recommendation. So that would be the, a working item agenda line to discuss. And then a third 
would be listing, um, uh, working through the things we need to successfully move forward with merger talks. Um, and an example of that is like listing out departments and um, groups within the department, um, within the town and, and also a list within the village, um, talking about employee positions within those groups um, and indicating whether or not they're full or part-time, listing out all major assets uh, and liabilities with either the town or the village and listing up types of work and responsibilities for each. Um, so basically those, that's just an example of the things we would work on creating a list of what we need to do to further talks. So again, the topics are rules of engagement, um, items that need to actually be worked. Um, and I think that gap analysis is the big one we came up with. And then a list of um, things to consider as we start the talk. Um, Eben or BJ or Steve, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, that covers it really well, I think. Yeah, we had emailed back and forth uh, around that time. We covered everything. Good. Okay, see so you on the 12th. So the up to the 12th. The only other thing I wanted to just bring up, I know we had asked at our select board meeting uh, for Brian and Rosemary to poll the employees, see what their thoughts were on the mask mandate. Uh, and I'm, and they are, are asking for it or supportive of it, and the trustees have uh, agreed to a mask mandate for the downstairs only. No. No. Highly recommend masks be worn in the court. Oh, highly recommend. Okay. Yeah. So, but it was it was not a mandate. It was a highly recommend. Until you go across that door into their work area, then it's mandatory no matter what. Yeah, okay. and then employees at the desk don't have to wear a mask right. if they don't want to, but if they move around the office, they must wear a mask. And but I didn't participate in any discussion, but I was just curious I mean, this discussion was uh, about taking the whole building and the upstairs. One of the reasons I'm thinking about is this space is uh, utilized by the seniors and they're the most vulnerable group. Um, and I'm just curious. Did you guys have that kind of discussion extending it beyond just within the office? Just, just in the office. That was what, anything else was voted down. And there was no support for the rest of the village? <clears throat> not majority support. Um, yeah, I was in favor of it. Yeah, not, not majority support. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, that's, I, I would support it, uh, building one. Just make an easy rule that says if you're in the building. I mean, if you're going to do that, you're going to do it to every municipal building in the town in the village. You can't just pick and choose one. <laughs> well, the, I understand. Okay, that. that's playing games with people's minds on how to understand what. Yeah, I don't want to pull that. Um, so um, it's a, it's a public. The public comes into this building. This is where we put the public into the building, um, and uh, they have business to do here, so they don't have. Business to another uh, buildings. Um, I think it's a it's a small thing to ask for people. It protects our, empl our employees in particular, and uh, we need to take this panel seriously. So, um, I would ask the trustees to reconsider that. If not, it's your choice. Say that again. The whole thing? No, just the <laughs> last sentence. I'm not, I would ask the, the trustees to reconsider, but. That's they're you know okay. both boards would have to pass it for the court. So. Well, actually, that brings it back to another thing too. You know, I'm going to kind of go back to some of our beginning conversations about jointly owned buildings. You know, we could actually talk about this building. You know, one entity could own it, and the other one could pay rent, and one entity could strictly control the building. I mean, that's something to think about too. Why does this building have to be a jointly owned building? Couldn't it be owned by the town? And then the village maybe pay rent or something for, for what goes on in the village. I mean, it's another topic of discussion for sure, but uh, that way we could come down to 
agreement if one entity owned it, that one entity could make the decision for the bill. And then we would have to be in this business again, going back and forth. Okay, but that's a story. another story. I know, but it's something to think about. We won't get out for this. That's true. I mean, I just uh, threw it out there. We can spend a couple of minutes on that. And, and I think the trustee should reconsider. We're just asking to reconsider because it is that important. It was an accident. It's that important. We want to think of other people and protect them and be safe. I, I would be okay with putting it on next month's agenda and putting it on each month's agenda just to be able to keep current with the current status. So we can we can vote on it each month until this thing is over and rely upon the current status of the situation. So okay. So with that in mind, just to move us forward, um, I'd like to make two motions. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, well maybe I'll try and do it one motion. But, um, that um the uh Council at board endorses and supports the, the policy, mirror policy, exactly what the trustees have passed. And that should the trustees in the future pass a uh, mandate for the building, that the select board would be on board with it. And uh, then it would, it would pass it. I would entertain that motion. Has spoken. Is there a second? I'll second that. We have a motion with a second. Is there any discussion? I don't like that motion because it ties this automatically into a decision that they make. Yeah, I'm going to say, what if, so what if, if we go in the direction? We're automatically going to agree to what they have to say. So, I mean, you, you can go ahead and take both. I know I'm going to vote against it. You know, but if they make a decision now, we're already tied to it. Because we could motion for the whole building. But because we don't own the whole building, it would only be downstairs, obviously. So we have to agree with them 100% for it to go forward. Okay. But what Max said was that we're going to concur with what they said, what they've already said. And if they make a change, that we're automatically going to go along with what they said. Would the motion or entertain a friendly amendment to? mirror what they currently have approved and if they approve the full municipal building mass mandate the select board would concur with that or something along that line. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly what he said. Well no he said anything yeah he said he said any he said any mandate so that was the way I that's the way you said it uh, do you have it written down but, you know, not, I guess it doesn't matter. Yes. Assumptions okay. are never good when it comes to motions. That's a good point too. <laughs> but that is what that is the intent. That was the intent. Okay. Um, I feel like we should um not have it contingent on the trustees vote and we should vote for whatever we want to vote for and have a motion based on whatever we want our motion to be for. And if the trustees change their mind along the way, they can agree with ours or they can create their own, whatever. And we, you know, um, I, I, I would like to see everybody who is attending our select board meetings wearing a mask. Um, regardless of the building they're in, they're in a public, we're in a public meeting space, having a public meeting. And I think if the, the select board is hosting that meeting, it can be the select board's prerogative as to whether or not it masks are required, I would think. And I think you're right, Beth, that separate of whatever comes out of this tonight, the select board on its own could require masks for our own needs. Um, and I, I do think, you know, we do have a lot of different um, entities that use our properties and there is another public building that we just talked about tonight which is the mill house um, and we do have food shelf there and we do have boy scouts going in and out of there um, 
so I think we should, whatever we want to put on the floor, um, I think we should put it based on the meeting itself and the owner of the meeting or and maybe maybe and or um also the the space in which it's being held points not sure if that changes anything with motion motion on the floor is only with this particular building is there any further discussion no. The motion on the floor is this particular building contingent on trustee vote. Yes. Supporting the downstairs that the village already approved. And if the village goes building wide, we would already be on board. Any further discussion? Uh, I can't really see a reaction now. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, I think I shared my thoughts when I introduced the motion. Um, I still kind of just feel like I'd like to see a, a requirement for the whole building. Um, we we need to both boards to act for that. So this um, this is our board acting, and it gives the other board the option to to act and, and put that into place sooner than than later should they decide they want to do that. But if we keep the motion as it is, we're restricting our um, we're restricting ourselves in terms of our requirement of masks at select board meetings, right? No, no because Eric Eric's the chair of the board. He, he can set rules for participation as he feels fit as as chair. Um, so particular meetings are a separate issue altogether. <laughs> Okay. And you can think of another way. The trustees voted to have mask mandate downstairs, but that couldn't be implemented until we approved it. We approved that tonight and also extended to the whole building. That can't be implemented until the trustees approve it. So one of us has to go first, anyhow. All right. I think it's great that we have common ground anyway on the employees downstairs. So I think that's the highest priority. So. And just for you guys' awareness, the select board had this topic brought up uh, last meeting. Uh, and you all know probably that the legislature approved uh, the select board being able to make a town wide mandate uh, for all businesses and uh, public spaces. Uh, we opted, or I personally, would not support that. I would not support going to that measure. So the board did not take action on that. Well, just because you didn't support it, didn't you right? Support it. I personally wouldn't have supported that. I think, and the way the law was written, two of the most public areas are exempt from that mandate, and that's uh, religious churches and stuff and schools. And schools under a separate. Separate. So they're all exempt. Those are the most public areas, but that's exempt from anything we could do. So on this motion, no further discussion. All those in favor, signify the same way. Aye. Aye. And those opposed? Nay. The motion passes. Oh, you got to do a roll Oh, yeah. Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Matt, how do you vote? Aye. Evan, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. The ayes have it. Motion passes. Any other business? I'd like to make another motion that um, select board require mandates at our select board meetings. Sorry. Uh, that can't. select board require masks at our, at our select board meetings. <laughs> um, she blame everybody that comes to the select board meetings. Would you prefer to take that up on our own at another meeting? Nope. No? Okay, we have a motion on the floor for select board meetings requiring the mask. This is not the record, is it? No. No. It's not a money item. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're going to allow us to talk about a second. 
There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I think we should talk about it at our meeting. Why should we talk about that at our meeting and not this topic at our meeting? Brian, I mean, the agenda item was just adding mask mandates. Because you're kind of coming in from left field here. Uh, I'm not against masks. I wear them. I am not coming in from left field. I am coming in talking about mask mandates. On our last two select board meetings, there's only been a one member who hasn't worn a mask. And I believe that that member made a choice. I, I believe said what? That, that person made a choice. I've said from the beginning that if it comes down to an employee's wanting it to feel safe, I will support it. I have not heard any requests from employees to have masks required at select board meetings, so I will not support this. Okay. So if you heard from Brian or Rosemary, who are regularly at our meeting, they said that's what they wanted. Okay. I can answer that a little bit, but I can raise another point. I would prefer if people wore masks at our meetings. We're spending hours inside of a room with poor ventilation. Uh, I think it's appropriate. I prefer people wore masks. Uh, the other thing of why it's appropriate to mention it tonight, uh, it might be helpful for people to know before our next select board meeting what the expectations at that meeting are going to be. So, good point. You know, we could tell people at that meeting, from now on, we want you to wear a mask. Or we could make that an expectation that is known before the meeting so that people have an opportunity to make accommodations. Oh, you put me in a pickle. What about your roles, Mary? <laughs> Brian suited it very well. So, the consensus that I'm getting is that our two employees want it. I will. Retract what I just said. <laughs> Although it's saying actually, it's actually, it'll go by with what you just said. I would support you, you what, what, what you just said. <laughs> Is there any further comment? Seeing none. Uh, all the in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Okay, Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Matt, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Evan, how do you vote? Nay. Motion. Majority aye in favor. Motion passes. Any further business? If not, select the one stands adjourned at 822.